Welcome to Mount Sinai Live. We stream smart healthcare information that's simple to understand so you can improve your health. I'm physical therapist, Dr. Jimmy McKay, and I'm your host. Yesterday, Demi Moore, ex-wife of the Armageddon and Pulp Fiction star Bruce Willis, announced on Instagram, quote, as a family, we wanted to share that our beloved Bruce has been experiencing some health issues and has been recently diagnosed with aphasia, which is impacting his cognitive abilities. Today, we're sharing with you what you need to know about aphasia. To help us learn more is an assistant professor of neurology at the Icon School of Medicine and attending physician at the Mount Sinai and Mount Sinai Queens Stroke Centers, Dr. Laura Stein. Dr. Stein, welcome to Mount Sinai Live. Thanks for having me. Unfortunate circumstances that bring us here today. Yeah, Dr. Stein, uh, Demi Moore making that announcement yesterday that I just read has to tug at your heartstrings along with the great work that you do. For those who may or may not know the term, let's start with that. What is aphasia? So aphasia is a fancy term that doctors use to describe the loss of one's ability to use their language function or communicate with the world around them. And it's due to damage in the brain. One of the things I don't think people always think about is how all encompassing language function is. It's what we say with our words. It's what we stand, understand of others' words. It's our ability to read, our ability to write, our ability to name, repeat, and really everything in between. And I think we have to remember that aphasia represents a symptom that patients experience or a sign that doctors look for on their exams. And it's really just a term describing these problems with language and communication. It tells us nothing about why someone is having problems with their language and communication. I also just want to acknowledge aphasia can be profoundly difficult and frustrating for patients and their families. And you know, our ability to communicate with the world around us is just paramount to the human experiment experience. Yeah, being very sensitive to that. Uh, you, you did mention signs and symptoms. Let's talk about that. What are the signs and symptoms of aphasia? Yeah, you know, the signs and symptoms of aphasia are actually quite varied depending on the individual. An aphasia can be so mild that someone talking to an individual might not even know that they have it. In such a case with a mild aphasia, one might have trouble coming up with words or the names of objects. At times, their speech may sound broken and fragmented, but they may still be able to communicate what they want to communicate and understand what people are saying and what they're reading around them. Unfortunately, aphasia can be very debilitating at times. And some people have a really difficult time making any of their needs known or understanding what's going on around them. And as I said, these are very troubling and frustrating signs and symptoms for patients and their families to live with. Let's talk about this in terms of diagnosis. How is aphasia diagnosed? A diagnosis of aphasia starts with a detailed examination of one's language function. It might be performed by a neurologist like myself or a speech and language pathologist. And it's really important to assess every component of language function. We listen to what somebody says, whether spontaneously or with various prompts. We assess what they understand when they're spoken to. We assess their ability to read, their ability to write, their ability to name everyday objects around them, and their ability to repeat sentences that are spoken to them. All right, in terms of diagnosis now, we understand what it is, some signs and symptoms. How about causes? People have to be wondering, what causes aphasia? Yeah, the causes really can be quite varied. And anytime language function is abnormal, we worry about damage to very specific locations of the brain where the language centers are stored. In the majority of people, the language centers are on the left side of the brain, but in a small minority, they may be on the right. And as I said, the causes can be varied. Uh, it is more common in older individuals, and stroke is actually the most common cause just because of how many people it affects in our society at older ages. However, there are many causes like a degenerative disease that might cause some dementia, a tumor, infection, head trauma, but again, it's really all about figuring out what part of the brain is not working normally and why. Well, with varied uh, causes of aphasia, I know we have varied types of aphasia. Can you talk about us uh, briefly about what types of aphasia there are and how, how they come into play? Yeah, there are multiple types of aphasia and the networks that underlie language function are very complicated and interconnected. But we'll break it down in broad senses. There are expressive and receptive aphasias. With an expressive aphasia, an individual has difficulty expressing themselves, speaking in sentences, coming up with words, writing. Their speech may sound broken and fragmented. 
With a receptive aphasia, an individual has more trouble understanding language, what people are saying, what they're reading. And of course, these aphasias can be mixed and there can be expressive and receptive components to them. The most profound aphasia, unfortunately, is a global aphasia where all aspects of language function are impaired. And it's incredibly difficult to communicate with the world around one. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, let's ask this final question in terms of treatment. How is aphasia treated in the line of work that you are in? So first and foremost, we have to understand what the cause of the aphasia is. And you know, once one identifies the cause, such as a stroke in my line of work, we can think about, well, one, can we treat that? Or two, can we prevent it from getting worse? Beyond that kind of treatment, we really want to think about how can we help the individual rehabilitate. We have outstanding speech and language pathologists who are specially trained in optimizing one's language function and their ability to communicate with the world around them despite their aphasia. Thank you so much for that. To be more close to her Instagram post yesterday about her ex-husband, Bruce Willis, by saying, quote, as Bruce always says, live it up. And together we plan to do just that. We are wishing the best for Bruce Willis and his family during this time. Dr. Stein, thank you so much for the insight. Find us at Mount Sinai NYC on all major social platforms. This has been another Mount Sinai Live broadcast. We stream smart healthcare information that's simple to understand so you can improve your health. I'm physical therapist, Dr. Jimmy McKay. Thanks for watching.